If you've ever wondered how Lara Croft got to be the badass, dual-wielding, raptor-killing femme fatale that we all know and love, then you might be interested in the newest Tomb Raider title. It's a prequel that explores Lara's roots as she fights for her life on an island filled with wolves, a crazy cult, and lots and lots of explosions. But will the newest Tomb Raider be a welcome addition to the franchise, or will it suck worse than that Dumb and Dumber prequel? Let's find out. Even if you've never played a Tomb Raider game, you probably know who Lara Croft is. She's best known for her affinity for a treasure and her very recognizable set of, uh, guns. Anyway, this game features a younger and drastically different Lara Croft. It turns out that there was a point where she could only fire one gun at a time and hadn't yet stolen enough jewels to afford that boob job. In fact, the Lara Croft we meet in this adventure hasn't even killed anyone yet. She's just a girl with an interest in paleontology and a bit of an unlucky streak. When her ship goes down, she winds up stranded on an island with a team of paleontologists and an annoying documentary filmmaker. Even worse, the local inhabitants seem to decorate all their hideouts with human remains, which does not bode well for Lara. The first thing that you may notice about the game is that it looks fantastic. The developers did a really great job of bringing this island setting to life, and when your character reaches the top of a mountain or a radio tower, you can gaze out at the terrain and really appreciate the scale of this game. One minor aesthetic annoyance I had was the raindrops and blood hitting the camera. This kind of thing makes sense in a first person game, and in fact, I'm really looking forward to the new Metro game as the rain on the mask makes for a super immersive feel. However, in a third person game, it pulls me out of the experience and makes me feel like there's someone following Lara around with a camera. The voice acting in this game is pretty good, and I really liked whoever was voicing Lara. Unfortunately, I felt the writing was pretty weak, and the dialogue was easily forgettable. This problem isn't helped by the fact that the cast is made up almost entirely of one-note characters. There's the scummy filmmaker who just wants to be famous, the loyal and lovable big guy, and the grizzled old man who doesn't take no guff. They all feel pretty one-dimensional, and unfortunately this hurts the game's equally predictable storyline. To really explain why I dislike this story, I have to talk about a bunch of spoilers. So you know the drill. If you don't want to see the spoilers, click the button or click away from this video now. I'll give you a second. Okay, here's my problem with the story. The game is extremely predictable. You can see everything coming a mile away. This old guy gets captured and has to sacrifice himself so that Lara can make it. This sniper guy, yep, has to sacrifice himself as well. The nerdy camera guy with the generic t-shirt, guess what, he has to sacrifice himself so that Lara can survive. This kind of scene loses its intensity if you keep repeating it. What they should have done, what would have been awesome, is if they gave you a mission where you could only save one of these characters and forced you to choose. That would have been cool. Also, the scummy, morally questionable filmmaker, yeah, he turns on you. I almost didn't put a spoiler warning on this part, because anyone who plays this game for five minutes can figure out what's gonna happen. Anyway, problems with the story aside, there is some good character development as Lara turns from a fresh-faced kid to a killer who does what she needs to in order to survive. You also get to learn some backstory of one of gaming's favorite female leads. Let's talk about gameplay. You're in for a lot of quick time events, too many in my opinion. I would have preferred more puzzle solving and less scripted sequences. For long portions of the game, you're doing nothing but pressing a few buttons to get to the next bit of cutscene. Now while I feel there are too many cutscenes, I also have to mention that they are pretty well done. They're fluid and intense, and I would have enjoyed them a lot more if there weren't so damn many of them. The stealth sections of the game are pretty fun, but they're just a wee bit repetitive. Most of them boil down to waiting for a couple of enemies to stop talking, and then shooting them in the head with arrows. You can also sneak up on them and take them down with your bow, but those are your only stealth kill options. It would have been nice to see a little more variation. Maybe she could have had some poison darts, or she could set up snare traps or something. I don't know, just something to change things up every now and then. As far as combat goes, it's pretty good. There's also a skill where you can dodge and then stab your opponent in the knee with an arrow, which is kind of neat. However, I was a little let down by the finishers. They just didn't feel that creative, which I guess makes sense since Lara isn't an assassin or anything. But I remember seeing them and just kind of going, meh. I don't know, maybe I'm just desensitized or something. Some of the boss fights were a bit of a letdown. They were way too easy and straightforward. It wasn't so much about figuring out your enemy's weakness. It was just kind of about blasting them in the face with a shoddy. The best boss fights were the ones that involved platforming, and there was a good one where you're up against a turret gunner on a ship that's suspended in mid-air and it's being blown to bits. It really gives you a good look at how dynamic some of these environments are. Now, while the boss fights were kind of a hit or miss, I have to give it up for the regular enemy AI. You can't just hide behind a piece of cover and snipe them to death, because they'll hit you with napalm, flank you, or just blow away your cover completely. 
My only real complaint about the enemies was the lack of enemy variation. I would have liked to see some raptors or something. I know she fights raptors in other games, and I was kind of hoping to run into one in this game, but no such luck. Puzzle solving is another area where the game does well. None of them are terribly hard, but they're all pretty satisfying when the pieces click into place and you get that sweet, sweet treasure you're after. Also, this Tomb Raider has a multiplayer, which is interesting. Much like the Uncharted 3 multiplayer, you get the fun of multi-level combat, using zip lines and climbing around, but unfortunately the game has balance issues, and your faction's starting location and weapons will be a huge factor in determining if you win or lose. But hey, multiplayer isn't the main draw of Tomb Raider anyway, so I'm not going to hate on it too much. Okay, you know what time it is, let's go over the pros and cons. On the pro side, you've got fantastic set pieces, good puzzle solving, and crafty enemy AI. On the con side, you have a predictable story, boring characters, and stealth that gets kind of repetitive. Overall, a pretty good game, but I was hoping for a little more. The newest Tomb Raider gets 7.5 non-existent raptors out of 10. I'm sure you all have your own opinions and can't wait to tell me why I'm wrong, so go ahead and hit those comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.